Hey everyone, I'm Megan. I'm an artist and arts educator, and I love talking about materials. <laughs> so if you just got some fresh watercolors, this video might be for you. And I've of course got more to say on watercolors, but we'll save that for another video. Here are the materials I keep on hand. A masonite board helps move around your work and give you something to tape your paper down to. If you don't have a masonite board, you can tape directly to your table. I like to use two water jars, one for clean water and one for dirty water. For a gentle tape, painter's tape or washi tape is best, and any soft brush. For watercolor paints, you can use them from the tube or from the pan. I'll try to write more in the description but here I am using tube paints squeezed into a homemade kit. I like to keep a pencil and a couple different erasers on hand and we need thicker paper than regular drawing paper. There's a little more information at the end so any watercolor paper will do. Set up your table however you like. Don't necessarily copy mine, I'm using it a little differently for filming purposes. Here I'm just choosing a small sheet to do some swatches on, just to get to know my paints, test them out a little bit. I recommend this every time you get some fresh watercolors. And I like to stretch out the whole paper so I can go right to the edges. So while I'm setting up here, I'll just mention um, in the description there's more information on colors but you need at least three, yellow, red, and blue, uh, or cyan, magenta, and yellow are ideal for mixing, and I like to include a brown here. Using kind of a medium-sized brush, I'm just activating the paint with some water and putting it into a mixing space. You can use any palette, a plastic palette, the lid of something is fine. Here I'm using a ceramic or porcelain palette, which is my favorite. The amount of water versus paint changes the outcome quite a bit. Remember to rinse your brush between colors so that your brush is nice and clean for the next color. So if I want to make a new color, orange here for example, I'm going to start with the lighter color, yellow, and I'm going to rinse my brush before I get the next color, red, and I just need a little bit of red. I can always add more, but it's harder to go back the other way. I dab my brush on the paper towel to check if my brush is clean after rinsing, but also to get the excess water out so I'm not just making a lighter and lighter or thinner and thinner paint. So the thickness again of the paint changes the way it looks quite a bit. Here you can see that very thin red looks like pink and as I make it thicker and thicker it looks more like red. With watercolors we're working with the the transparency of the paint and the translucency of the white of the paper coming through the paint. So I'm showing the same thing here using blue for the difference in thickness and I recommend testing this out with your colors. It'll give you an idea of how much you need to use to get it activated and how strong your pigments are. Now secondary colors can lean either way. If you're making a purple, for example, it can lean more red or more blue. So you can have reddish purple or bluish purple. I like to go back and forth if I'm looking for a perfect kind of middle mixture. Next I'm going to make some green, so I'll start with the yellow and I'll rinse my brush, get a tiny bit of blue, and that gives me 
eh, some wattle middle green I'll adjust a little bit if it needs to be a little lighter or darker or thicker based on how much yellow, blue, and water are involved. Now, if you don't have black in your kit and you'd like to make a natural black, you can mix blue with brown. And those two colors make something similar to a Payne's gray. Now, if that gray is applied very thick or layered multiple times to achieve a darker color, it will look closer to a natural black or an almost black. Now, when mixing this color, it is tricky. It very often looks a little more blue or a little more brown. So this one is a good practice for fiddling with your colors to get a neutral gray in the middle. It's tricky. <laughs> but all of those blues and browns on the way to finding that gray are wonderful shadow colors. Here's just a little color wheel as a reminder. So we've got our primaries, our yellow, red, and blue, or cyan, magenta, and yellow. And we're using our three primary colors to make our three secondary colors. And the tertiary colors would be reddish purple, bluish purple, the ones that go in between that aren't uh, written into the wheel here. Now here I'm just going to illustrate the purpose of the tape um, by putting some paint right to the edge. And once your painting is completely dry, you can peel that tape off. I always peel away from my picture so that if it does tear the paper, it tears the edge and not your painting. There's still some shiny bits, so I might let it dry off to the side. For cleaning your palette, when you need more space, you can just re-wet the color and squeegee it out with, with a paper towel. Brushes just need to be rinsed with water. You don't even need to really use soap. and the brushes can be lay flat to dry on a paper towel. Remember to change your water as needed to not muddy up your colors too much and also between each session. Now here I'm going to make a few gradients of color using a scrap piece of paper so it can help remind us how we got there and see all the variations between. Reminder that if your paints are already damp from using them for a while, the pigment comes out a lot faster, so you don't need as much to get going. Try making a few gradients from a primary to another primary with the secondary in the middle. Here's a quick demonstration of the difference in paper. This is just a printer paper or regular drawing paper, and it's just too thin. It can't hold up to the water. Now, watercolor paper is thicker and absorbent. Hot press is the smooth version, and cold press is a rougher version. I like to remember it that hot press is like it's being ironed. So here I'll do that middle gray again, using blue and brown 
and the variations between, you can get that almost neutral gray and a lot of other versions. Be careful how many times you brush over the same area. Brushing over a few times gently works fine with a nice strong paper, but going over the same area too many times or scrubbing will overwork the paper and cause it to crumble like this. Experimenting will help you figure out which one is your favorite. I hope this video has been helpful and let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see in future ones. Don't forget to hit subscribe and follow on socials. I'll see you there.